Uh, I'm Dr. Brad Landry. I'm a pediatric rehab physician here at the Mayo Clinic Children's Center. Uh, joint hypermobility uh, is most commonly discussed with um, something called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome or EDS. Uh, but hypermobility is really just a symptom. Uh, it can be seen among a variety of different disorders, uh, but also sometimes as a uh, something that just runs in the family. Uh, patients are typically told they have uh, EDS when they meet uh, certain diagnostic criteria, which includes uh, having equal to or greater than five points on a nine-point scale called the Byton scale. Uh, and this includes things like being able to bend your pinkies back past 90 degrees, bringing your thumb down to your forearm, uh, having greater than uh, 10 degrees of hyperextension or bending your elbow back uh, too far on each side, or bending your uh, knee back past 10 degrees in the, in the wrong direction or uh, placing your uh, palms flat on the floor in a standing position with your knees straight. Uh, the only other diagnostic criteria include that you do not have any other signs of the other types of EDS, uh, but additionally then have what they describe as a soft or velvety skin. Uh, and in my pediatric population that becomes quite a subjective feature. Uh, the problem we often see is that this criteria is not only easy to meet, uh, but can cause confusion among the various types of EDS um, and how those are exactly related. Uh, individuals with the hypermobility type alone aren't necessarily at any increased risk of uh, the vascular concerns or the uh, skin concerns or the scoliosis concerns that we see among the other types of EDS. Uh, in fact, I avoid the use of the EDS moniker altogether uh, in order to avoid confusion when the patients go home and Google either's danlos syndrome or hypermobility. Uh, the results can be quite overwhelming and actually may uh, be detrimental to the potential progress we can make with regards to their, um, their pain and, and, and their functionally limiting symptoms. Uh, the most serious problem I see in, in my patients with hypermobility is, though, is that they're often told to avoid uh, the very thing that could actually help them get better, physical activity. Uh, it's true that some individuals with hypermobility may have more pain, but there's many people with hypermobility that don't have any pain. And so it really uh, takes a concerted effort to find exactly what that specific therapy or exercise regimen is that can be done slowly and gradually and progressively over time to reach the point where we're seeing benefits in pain or, or decreases in pain and improvements in function. Uh, the other thing I emphasize to my patients is that uh, there are certain types of exercises that can be very beneficial with hypermobility, such as running or even weight training. Um, if done correctly and over the right um, period of time in, in a uh, supervised fashion, uh, all of these things uh, are not necessarily going to be bad for your hypermobile joints. Uh, what we do know for certain, however, is that if there is avoidance of activity or physical activity in general, together with deconditioning or decreased cardiorespiratory fitness, those aspects absolutely will place you more at risk of increased pain and decreased function over time. Uh, so in summary, hypermobility doesn't equal Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Similarly, hypermobility doesn't have to equal pain. And most importantly, having hypermobility doesn't mean that you can't exercise or should avoid exercise altogether.